Welcome back to Sports Fans Only with C. Anthony. I'm Sean Mack. And once again, if you like today's content, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And get in that comment section as well. Don't be scared. We don't bite. As always, we're here to uh, discuss a little boxing. We're going to be talking about the Usyk and the Bois fight. So as always, we hop right into it. C, first question. Was the Bois robbed of this fight? And do you think that shot Usyk gave him was below the belt? Two-part question. You know, um, kind of a long answer. You know, sometimes when I think Rob, I think like something that was like intentional, like from the beginning of the fight, like, hey, we looking for whatever. So I say you you still you still could call it a robbery. You could call it a mistake. But um, at the end of the day, I still feel like Du Bois should be the winner right now. And um, I feel like he should have had the victory. I feel like it was his. So I guess short answer, yes. But I, would, I, I still, like I said, I still, I don't, I don't feel like it was intentional. I think maybe the ref, he didn't see it live. He looked more at the um, the reaction and the way Usyk sold it. And all of a sudden, boom, and it was in his mind. So I kind of think he saw the reaction, not just the um, the punch itself. So short answer, yes, but I don't think it was intentional. But still doesn't the um, take away from the fact, I think that Usyk should have lost and had his first loss. I agree. You know, after watching some of the... Um highlights and everything and going back and rewatching that fight to me Usyk sold it first of all he was home people people get that twisted he got a little home cooking and it was like a basketball player that complains about certain things that fighters do post-fight pre-fight <clears throat> pre-game at least four times before he was hit on the belt line Usyk complained about the boys hitting him low so yeah. I think the referee kind of got coerced into uh, making that call, and it was a little home cooking. So I don't think it was a total robbery how they do in boxing a lot, but it is what it is. The boy should be the undisputed right now. That's um, how I feel. In that belt, you know, I w my whole life has been um, below the belt. Below the belt is a low blow, the groin area. And, you know, to me, in my eyesight, it looked like it was right on the belt line. Some people talk about the uh, – the belly button being that, but with the belt so high, you can't tell. I feel like maybe they, they should have had um, maybe cleared that up in the dressing room when you when they go over the rules and everything. This is good. This is not. I feel like maybe they should have um got a little bit more in depth. Like, hey, Usyk, you're high, but sometime in the, in the ring in the middle of the fight, your cup might start to rise and rise that spot. That's why I say maybe not intentional, but still and all, yeah. Yeah. Um. Next question. Would you care to see that fight again? Should it be a rematch? I wouldn't like. I, I would not like to see a, a rematch. I um. I would like to see the fight overturned. I, I would like for them mm. to go back and um take a look, maybe overturn the fight. But I don't want to see a rematch. I want to see um. You know, I'm all about like I guess the top four, the final four in the heavyweight division. I want to see Usyk get into the ring with Wilder. I want to see him getting there with Fury. He already got in with AJ, so. On my part, I, you know, maybe Daniels fans wouldn't want to hear that, but I could care less for the rematch. I'd rather it just be overturned or not. We just move on. That's how it is in boxing. Some things get swept under the rug. But short answer, no, I don't want to see a rematch. Yeah, I feel like it'll be more controversy if you went back and changed that. I can't think of anything off the top of my head in boxing where they went back and changed anything. They might admit that they were wrong, like the NFL, like to admit they're wrong with the Sunday, the Monday after the games, but they never change anything. Mentioning yeah. Usyk and Wilder, you say you want to see that fight. If they fought, who you taking? I got Wilder all day. You know, I feel like Usyk it probably is the well, he is the superior boxer. But against Deontay Wilder, I don't, you know, we all know Usyk doesn't load up on punches. He doesn't throw a lot of big shots. Great timing, good footwork. And um, great composure, great stamina. But first, Deontay, if the game plan is going to be we're going to box Deontay and get our hands raised at the end, I don't see that happening because Deontay is going to put – you're going to get touched at some point. Almost almost everybody except Fury can't get up. It's like, you know, help me, I can't get off the ground. And, and you know, Fury, for some reason, he's gotten used to just getting up, getting up from those wild, the big punches, those bombs. But – I don't see Usyk not getting hit, and if he gets hit, even if he got up, I just see Deontay going in for the kill, maybe getting a TKO, getting a stoppage. But I don't see him outboxing Wilder for 12 rounds and not touching the canvas and Wilder not touching that right hand 
or the left hand, either hand with wild is, is is deadly. Like if it if it connects with a good percentage, you're going down. So um, I I take if I had to put money on it, I'd bet Wilder. Me too. Unless we find out a lot about um, Usyk's chin, if he get up, continue to get up, he could put a lot of us in situations where we're like, "Wow, we didn't think he had that." Yeah, you know? but Wilder's gonna be digging to that body also. Wilder's gonna probably shrink the distance a little bit on Usyk, not try to let him stay on the outside so much. And even if he's clinching in the in the clinch, Wilder's gonna be slipping in him or Fury. They both excellent at slipping in those shots close quarters, just a little bit to make you breathe a little harder, nothing major, nothing major. So I, I see why I see um Usyk being wore down, even if he's winning the fight and ahead on points. I see Wilder, even the smallest punches, slowing him down a little bit. So most people, a lot of people is probably going to take Usyk, but I'll take Wilder all day and just take my mm-hmm. chances with that. Me too. I even go further. I say Wilder would knock him out by the sixth round. If it goes past six, then Usyk does have a chance to win that fight. But as we all seen, Wilder do have power even when he's tired, right? Yeah, he carries his power the whole fight. I could see him being knocked out in the ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th. Yeah. If they had 15 rounds, I could see it still getting happen another 15 round. Me but too. um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I'm Wilder all day with that. I'm not going to bet on the boxing ability and capability of Usyk. I'm going to say Wilder's going to get lucky. As, not lucky, but... Something's going to break through the guard, uh, uh, something you're not going to see. And if Usyk gets hit with a shot he doesn't see, he just, he'll wake up later. Yeah, Usyk doesn't really block well as far as with his mitts, with his um gloves. He's more of a, like, mover. You know, he stayed trying yeah, to be movement. busy. He has great lateral movement. He can move, but Wilder will find you at some point. Yeah, yeah. I've never seen no one that Wild, Wilder haven't found in, you know, like you said, Fury just always the guy to get up. Yeah. Um, last question. Usyk became, unless you were a true boxing fan, you didn't know about Usyk. His biggest wins are the two wins over AJ. So that's, to me, his level of competition, and he just had to win over the boys. But I don't think you can put the boys on the level of AJ. Pretty sure you can't. With that being said, I've heard people say this, but I'm not sure. I want to hear your answer. Is Usyk overrated? I'm not gonna say he's overrated. I think he's um I think he gets his just due coming up from the cruiserweights, coming up to the heavyweights, beating AJ. In that the AJ win right there to me says he's not overrated. I think a lot of people out here and I read some things saying he's overrated. I think he's did great. Even if he didn't win another fight at heavyweight, he still came up, he dominated the cruisers, came up and won big and won and took out AJ. Like I said, AJ being one of the top four. In the heavyweight division, one of the big uh, money makers, you know. Um, so I'm gonna say he's not overrated. He's getting, I think, his fair due and um, his just due. I think he's um right where he belongs. I think he's one of the top pound for pounds. And we'll we'll see how that fares when he goes up against Wilder, and um have to get in with Fury. I'm sure at some point him and Fury gonna have to unify those belts, man. At some at some point it's gonna be one guy with all the belts, and I feel like um. It comes down to Fury and Usyk. I'm still going to ride with Fury. You know, I hate the comparison that people say, and I know why they do it, because it's the whole cruiserweight going to heavyweight. They like comparing Usyk to Holyfield. We went through all of Holyfield's career when we were younger. We got to see him from beginning to end. That boy, Usyk, ain't no Holyfield. Let's just put it that way. He don't have that drive. I don't think he have that warrior mentality. He has it, but the comparisons that I hear to Holyfield, only thing I can compare is that they move from cruiser to heavyweight. That's it. Yeah, you know, he just – but he, I would say I kind of see the comparison sometime because um, he hopped right in there like Holyfield, dominated cruiserweight, came to heavyweight, and just hopped right in. You know, anybody who watched that fight with, with um, Usyk and AJ – if you didn't know much about Usyk and you just watched him win and say, you know, that guy just came from cruiserweight, that's hella impressive. So I see the comparison. You know, it's, um, I, I, I see, I, I know what they mean. They're not saying it like Holyfield, but mm, he just know. looks impressive. He looks impressive. Like if you, like you, the way you see him dominate AJ is like he'd been there before. Like he was, a, like he'd been ready. Like he should have been left cruiserweight just going there. It's not like he did that to like, um, 
Ruiz or Dillian White. He did it to one of the heavyweights best. So I feel the comparison is the best, the, probably the best one out there. You know, to me, he would have to do to, he would have to do that to Fury and Wilder in order for me to garner the Holyfield comparison because he would have to do what he did to AJ, to Wilder, or I'm going to say Ann, or Fury, then I can say, all right, that's some warrior ish right there. He really stepping up to the plate and doing what Holyfield did. Cause you know, you got the bow wars with him. You have Lennox, you Tyson, like he went through some wars, bro. Yeah, Farm, just, the you know, farming just, ones, the farming fights. Just, I would just say he's just this heiress. If I, you know, he could be this heiress of Holyfield because it, you know, there's no Tyson or anything like that in this era. Deontay Wilder with the power is the closest we kind of get with that. But um, so it's just like two different eras of um comparison. I would say, you know, he got the win this week, but that AJ fight meant a lot to be dominated like that because so many people were wrong about it. You know, it's um it's easy to say now, oh, he got the excellent footwork and this and that, but not a lot of people were saying that he was gonna compete with AJ. A couple couple people out there, a couple articles did, but I kind of I feel the comparison, not not just one on one, but just error to error. You got to kind of narrow it down to who's the closest to Holyfield in this era, who's the closest to Tyson in this era. So I kind of would say, yeah, for this in this in this group right now, you know, 2023 from 2020 to, to almost 2024, he'd be the closest thing to come up from, you know, to come up and do that. Yeah, well, I'm gonna leave it like this. Now we know Usyk's. Little secret that we're gonna see, and I'm pretty sure he's gonna be he's gonna be tested on it going forward, and that will mean a lot for his career going forward because people are gonna be aiming for it. So he needs to train for more people to go to the body. Not saying he needs to toughen up his body, but maybe shorten some of his punches, being that people are gonna be reaching for the body, and he's always gonna be the shorter man. Any last words before we get out of here? Well, yeah, you know that's where it comes down to. Now he's just um the body punches he took at Cruiser. As you move up the ranks in heavyweight, you might not be able to take those. There's always a deficiency somewhere. You you beating heavy, you probably gonna do well against heavyweights because of your foot movement, your stamina, your punching ability, and the great footwork. But it is always a plus and a negative. So the negative probably is gonna be is you know you probably do better slowing him down to the body than aiming for the head. So that that that'll be the thing that a lot, I think every heavyweight going forward is gonna do. Look like Daniel. That was his game plan was to um. Don't forget about the body. Keep touching that body. So every heavyweight probably do that. And at some point, somebody will be able to, like, you know, make him pay. Yeah, his promoter was saying that. He said he was actually working on those shots. That was actually his game plan. So I feel bad for the boy. So hopefully he can get it. I know he probably won't get that rematch, but I hope somewhere down the line he gets another shot at it. Once again, if you like today's content, make sure you like, share, and subscribe to the video. For C. Anthony, I'm Sean Mack. And this is Sports Fans Only. Peace.